This is Riemann sums. So recall the last video, we used equal partitions. We had delta x was b minus a divided by n, and that created equal widths. So now we're going to partition a, b into n sub intervals, but the width does not have to be equal. We're going to call this delta x, k. So before we called it delta x, because they were all the same. So it has a counter now because they're not all equal. K is our counter. And this is our Riemann sum. So I'm going to draw a picture of what could happen. So you can see here that our partitions can be unequal width. So if we take n approaches infinity, the problem is we still could have a width that's too big since they're unequal. So I have a solution for that. So the solution is to take the rectangle with the biggest width and take the biggest width and shrink the biggest width to zero. And that's going to work because we won't have one left over that's too big. So the way we do this is we take the max delta x k and shrink it to zero. That's the limit that we're going to take. So what we get is the area under the curve, a new area under the curve definition. So what we get is the area under the curve when we have a continuous f and the function is greater than zero on a, b. This is a symbol for all of x between a and b, that the function is greater than zero. Then the area between the function and the x-axis, and of course between a and b, the area is equal to the limit of the max delta x, k approaching zero of the series f of x times delta x is equal to the integral of f of x dx from a to b. And again, this since the function's positive, this is the area. There's another theorem that's very close to this. So this is almost the same theorem, but what's the difference? So in this top one, f is continuous and the function's greater than zero. And that's the area under the curve. This is the actual area. Here, we just have f of x is integrable from a to b. These are the same. This is the same, but this is net area. This is net area. We don't have the condition that the function's greater than zero, so it's the net area. So again, just to remind you, draw a picture of what the area would look like. So net area will be area one minus area two plus area three. Again, this area, this integral from here to here will just be negative. That's what's going on because the function's negative. So let's look at some examples and we'll come up some properties here too. So if we have a function, it's a piecewise function, it's defined to be two for x is greater than or equal to zero and one less than zero. Let's draw this out. So to the right of zero, x is greater than zero, the function's two, and it's one to the left of zero. Now this we're looking at from minus two to three. So we'll bind this, bound this. Before we get started, is f of x continuous? 
The answer is no, but it is integrable. We know it's integrable in this case because we're able to find the area. If we can find the area between negative 2 and 3, basically it's bounded, we'll be able to integrate it. So basically, all we're going to have here, we'll find area 1 and area 2. So this is going to be area 1 plus area 2, since the functions are both positive. It's going to be 2 times 1, it's length times height, width times height, plus 3 times 2. Again, this is 3, and it goes up 2. You can see right there, and it goes out 3. So this integral is... 2 plus 6, which is 8. If you look on a number line, it's helpful. So if we're integrating from minus 2 to 3, we can break it up because we can see it's broken up here from minus 2. So we can break it up minus 2 to 0 of the same f of x plus 0 to 3. And we can see this is area 1, and this is area 2. We will learn how to take these definite integrals soon enough. So if a is in the domain of f, and f is integrable on a, b, then we have these following two properties. Actually, if I go from a to a, integrate from a to a, again, it's just from a to a, Think about the area. Try to, you can draw that. Just a dot. The area under that curve. The width is zero. So that answer is going to be zero. This will make the width zero. A minus A. Therefore, the area is zero. Therefore, the integrals, integral is zero. So if we ever wanted to switch these limits of integration, we can switch them. We just, they're going to be off by a negative. So these two theorems shouldn't come as too big of a surprise because we had the same theorems for the summations and summations are integrals. So if we have a constant, that constant can come in the front, just like with the summation. If we have a sum, we can break that sum up. We can break, we can basically distribute the integral, just like we could distribute the sum. And in general, this next one, we did it as a specific example, but it's a theorem. And this works for net area also. I'm just doing an example where they're both positive. So we can see here, this would be my area 1 from A to C. And this would be my area 2 from C to B. Okay, so this theorem is just pretty basic, but it can be powerful sometimes. If we have two functions that are integrable, and if the function is greater than zero, then the integral is greater than zero. And so basically, the inequality holds across an integral. If f is greater than g on AB, then the integral of f is greater than the integral of g of x. Okay, so we're first going to evaluate the integral algebraically using the definition of absolute value. Basically, we're going to set up the integral. So we have to write this algebraically. It's x minus 3 if x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, or basically x is greater than or equal to 3, since so the same inequality, these two are the same. 
basically inside has to be greater than zero. It can't just be x is greater than zero. And then this one's the opposite of x minus three. And if this is x is greater than three, this is x is less than three. Now, when I go to set it up, I think it's actually better for me to look at the graph. So we know we're gonna be finding areas. This will be for part two also, we'll use it for part two. So the graph, it's a V and it's shifted to the right. So we're looking at the interval from zero to four, that's my AB, right here, AB. So this basically has two equations. This is to the right of three, it's y equals x minus three, and to the left of three. So this integral is gonna be broken up. That's a three there, from zero to three, and then three to four. So again, that you really get that from looking at the graph, not this so much. I get these equations from writing out the definition of absolute value. So from zero to three, it's to the left of three, it's this equation, it's that function. And to the right of three, greater than three, it's right here, just the function x minus three. And don't forget to write your notation dx on all your integrals. Again, we'll stop there. We'll calculate this later when we learn how to do it. So number two, geometrically, well, we can see here it's going to be the area under the curve and then that little area. So we have, just find the area under that curve, area one plus area two. It's half base one, height one, plus half base two, height two. So we have to find our height one, which is going to be this height. So we plug zero into there, and it'll be plus three. Plug zero in here. It's absolute value of negative three, which is positive three. Same thing. And you plug in four. Four minus one. I mean, four. Four minus three is one. I mean, yeah. So we get one right there. So our answer is five. One more problem. So first of all, we're not gonna learn how to integrate this um, right away. U sub won't work on this anyway, so it won't work even if we did know how to integrate. So we're gonna have to look at the graph and do this geometrically. Now you might know, you might some people might look at that and know exactly what it is, but if you don't, we, this is my equation. Maybe you want, we wanna play around with it, square both sides, if we don't recognize what that is. Um, how about bring the x squared on the other side? So we can now see this is a circle. When you solve for x or y, you have plus or minus, but we don't have plus or minus. So this is a half circle. And you can graph it on Desmos to sh see that that's what it is. So in order to find this integral, we got to find the area of half a circle. This is for a full circle, but we need half of it because of the half. Our r here, this is r squared equals one, so r is also one. It's pi over two, which means this is pi over two. That's it for today, thanks for watching.